Thank you for asking us to sign it. Because yeah, they're two guys. Yeah. yeah. They, they, uh, um, really smart. They come yeah. here today. Yeah, they're with Go Goral Palmer. I do have a it's Dallas project. Problem with the website database that lists the third party inspectors. I can go on that one. Well, there's a problem. It, it implies that you're a school site inspector, and it's not what it is. My
Judith Caballero. Present. Joe Carroll. Present. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf is absent. Is Nick Rico. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Jason will make it. Jason will not make it. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes, July 26, 2018, regular monthly meeting. Motion to approve. Need a motion to approve oh, the minutes? So Second. Any corrections or uh, additions? Yes, Nick. Um, the last page, I'm going to just offer you to get all the way to the last page. <laughs> that was at the motion to adjourn. No, not yet. <laughs> well, that was coming soon, Charlie. <laughs> you mean the second to the last? You mean the second to the last page? Sorry, second to the last page. I apologize. Look at that. My apologies. Page nine. Page nine. All right. Under Ms. Strauss's remarks. Yep. Okay. Um, Jetsy. The acronym is actually J E T C C, not J E T T C. Okay. Is that okay with you, Aubrey? Yes. That's it? And then four lines down toward the right end of the paragraph. Um, she also wanted to give a shot out to Glenn. Now, shout if out? it was a shot of Glenn Livet, maybe. But I think it was more like a shout we'll out. Yeah, I don't recall a shot. We'll change so, shot yeah. to oh, shout out. We shout out. Yes. And on the last line, yeah. um, she wanted to thank him for not only, oh, never mind. I misread it. Okay. My mistake. That's fine. Okay. Any other any other corrections? Uh, no. Sure. All all those in favor as corrected. And none opposed. Superintendent's operations report, David. Okay. Um, let's see. A copy of monthly report of operations for the month of July is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.24 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% uh, 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 biochemical oxygen demand and 96% total suspended solids removal uh, for the month with average effluent concentrations of 17 and 14 milligrams per liter respectively. A copy of the pump station flows is included in your packet. We're in current updated the programs at stations 12 and 14 on the 11th. Uh, the data at those stations uh, on those days are erroneous. Pump station 3 had an alarm on the 14th, which also caused a, an erroneous flow. Um, on August 3rd, uh, Aubrey Strauss, as part of the, uh, her work at the Cumberland County Sewer and Water Conservation District, inspected the private sewer that services uh, part of the Autumn Pond Homeowners Association. Uh, and um, found a potential break at, uh, as the service uh, uh, crossed a, um, uh, the sewer stream. Both Aubrey and I notified Matt Height of DEP. Since this is a private sewer, it is the, the responsibility of the homeowner association to maintain. Uh, the HOA contacted Ridsbar uh, Brothers Construction, who subsequently made the repairs on Saturday. It should be noted that Risborough did not find a break, but a badly deflected sewer main. Um, they were able to correct that. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to uh, correct one misstatement. You said it crossed a sewer stream. Oh, you just crossed a, a freshwater stream. Freshwater stream. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> also, uh, my last name ends with an E, not two S's. But <clears throat> that's not a big deal. <laughs> the other strokes. Mm -hmm. One one S one E. One S one E. Um, let's see, uh, Clark Insurance, uh, we've met with our insurance agent uh, to review our upcoming policy renewal. Our premium will increase about 2% uh, this coming uh, policy period uh, from $52,890 to $53,961. Uh, Dave, what, when is our actual renewal due to occur? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. When did you you Yeah. What's July. July. 
Sorry, continue. Uh, pump station number 25, uh, which is a new pump station down at Stewart Drive. Um, it's still uh, being operated by the uh, developer. Uh, Eston Loveless has resolved the vacuum uh, priming issues at the station, and the station has been operational. But again, it's still the responsibility of the developer. Uh, we continue the search process for a collection system laborer slash operator. We are currently evaluating se uh, several uh, possible candidates. Uh, Underwood has completed their bioin model of the uh, treatment um, process and have come up with an option to prevent the uh, proliferation of filaments that we historically fight at the, uh, the treatment plant. Uh, the proposed process is an anaerobic aerobic treatment process. Uh, we are conducting some additional tests to further evaluate this option. If we decide to move forward with it, we'll meet with DEP prior to making any changes. Is, is this uh, the filamenta filamentous bacteria problem, is that a summer problem primarily, or is that something to do with year round? We deal with it year round. It, it, uh, it's worse <coughs> in the summer. Um, and it, you know, we can deal with it. It, it obviously hasn't, uh, hasn't impacted our uh, treatment process and our effluent quality, but it is uh, something that we just got to be constantly aware of and react to mm -hmm. when it becomes an issue, yeah. but it is year-round. Yeah. Okay. And a couple more things. Uh, we got notification that uh, Ken has once again uh, passed uh, all his lab certification for uh, the work that he does in the lab, which he does very, very well. And finally, <coughs> we are going through the process of updating our billing software. Um, and it probably, uh, this is something we budgeted for this year. And I think we're looking at an October completion date of the, of the complete upgrade. And with that, I open up for any questions. Questions to the superintendent. Nick? Mr. Chairman, I was curious about um, the filaments. Is it just the one type of filament or several types that you're having issues with? <coughs> it's primarily a low DO filament, mm -hmm. um, which is um, a little unusual because we run a, we have uh, DO monitoring throughout our aeration tanks and we have DOs in the, the concentrations in the three milligram per liter range, mm. four milligram per liter range. We have mixers, so the DO is consistent throughout the tanks. Um, the more and more research that we're finding because of the, the high food to mass uh, ratio that we're loading the tanks at, uh, even at that high DO concentration, what the normal operator would consider a high DO, um, can proliferate those low DO filaments. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's, it's primarily that. And it's, used, and it's developed in the process. It's not mm -hmm. something introduced from the collection system and finds a place to grow? No, they don't, he doesn't think, think that it's the case, although he did determine that uh, through the um, wastewater characterization that he formed that we do have a very difficult waste to treat here in Scarborough, and mm -hmm. it, he thinks it's primarily due to the amount of uh, pump stations that we have residence time the, the wastewater has within the, mm -hmm. the force mains. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. So the high, the high food mass ratio, is that a result of running uh, fewer uh, clarifiers? Fewer aeration tanks. Yeah. Um, and we can run, we can double our aeration capacity, but then we run into an issue with um, uh, causing um, nitrification to occur, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that in itself is also a very expensive process because now we're, we uh, have to provide all the oxygen needed for that and the alkalinity and what have you. So, so. so basically, as, as we continue to grow and move towards uh, using the available capacities that we have at the plant, then <coughs> uh, this is something that we'll continue to have to deal with when we bring yep. both mm -hmm. clarifiers online. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and you know, one of the things that I have been noticing is, and I think this is some of the issues that we're starting to see here, 
is with the um, use of low flow plumbing fixtures. Uh, the wastewater strength is becoming stronger and stronger, and we're not seeing an increase in our flows with all the development that we've had in mm -hmm. Scarborough. We, our, our flows have been f relatively flat, but our wastewater strengths have gone up. So, so I know you're paying attention to this, but I guess I guess continued this modeling should help, and maybe we maybe we come up with modifications to our treatment process that will let us deal with this problem, but. I guess probably at some point we'll have to look at the assumptions for the design of the plant, the way it operates in conjunction with the waste stream that we're actually receiving now because that's changed over what our design parameters probably had planned for mm -hmm. early on. So it's just something we're going to have to keep <coughs> aware of and keep, keep focused on yep. looking to make those changes yep. as time goes by. Okay. Strauss with well, actually, that, that leads me to a question. So in this BioWin model, is Underwood actually, are they using the design concentrations for BOD or are they usually using actual? Are they using what we've, the higher BODs, for example, we've been seeing the last couple of years? They're using the results of the waste characterization they did in right, preparation yeah, okay. of this. Which would have been higher than the standard 200 yeah. milligrams per yeah. liter that Metcalf and Eddie uses, right? Yep. Good. Okay, good. Interesting. Thank you. All right, anything else? Uh, Mr. Chair. Oops, sorry, Joe. So given the, uh, the treatment that we've done down the Pine Point area with the additional potassium permanganate and such, we're still getting some high H2S readings. Even though we haven't got any complaints, has the odor gone away, or are we still dealing with some... Um, why, don't we, why don't we hold those questions till we get to that item on the agenda, and he'll give us that report. I guess I missed that. that. It's under old business. It's coming up under old business. Oh, I fast forwarded. Yep. <laughs> yep, I did. Okay. My apologies. No problem. It's exciting stuff. I was already there. It's in my notes. Okay. Uh, Correspondence. The main DEP <coughs> discharge incident report. All right. Um, as a result of a storm drain inspection, the town discovered that the sewer service for 21 <coughs> Cumberland Way had been inadvertently connected to the storm drain. The town reached out to the district and via our CCTV equipment, we confirmed the cross connection. I met with Riz Barr, um, who subsequently made the repair. I notified DEP via phone and provided the attached written notification once the repair was completed. One of the things I want to make a note of and clarification of, this is, I had actually brought this um, incident up verbally during our last meeting. Uh, so there were, um, we had we had an incident report last month for Winding Way, wind, Winding Way, just around the corner. And um, and uh, at the time, I made it, I referenced that another one had been discovered. So this is just a repeat. So of that was Woodspell. 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 Yes. Woodspell. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So this is this is a this is a redundant report from the verbal report that uh, David gave us last time. Not another incident. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. And I think to reiterate what we discussed last time, th these are fairly old construction. Projects they were 15 to 20 years old, I believe. And yes. We, we have different. We have different procedures in place, as the superintendent outlined at our last meeting, to try to ensure that this type of thing doesn't happen on today's watch. So we think we're in a good position, better position now than we were then to avoid this kind of a uh, incident. And if there's any others that are discovered with the ongoing inspections of the uh, stormwater system townwide, we'll correct those. Um, Keep us up to date of any any new finds that happen out there. Okay, old business. Five Point Road odor abatement. Um, <laughs> Ms. Barra has completed their work on the installation of the Eco Two system at Pump Station Two, Swiss County Road. Uh, we met with May and Oxy to finalize the tank locations, and all this, all, all the piping is now in place, and we're just waiting on the, the controls to finalize that installation. Uh, we continue our hydrogen sulfide monitoring program in the Pine Point area. 
These results are presented below. We have significantly more data as a result of two additional monitoring meters which uh, we've purchased. Uh, we have seen an increase in hydrogen sulfide concentration within the collection system. To address these, we have, uh, one, increased the amount of caustic addition, increased the frequency of caustic addition, and added an additional application of potassium, <laughs> potassium permanganate just upstream of the drop manhole at Primrose Drive all of which have seemed to have had a positive impact. Uh, we have not received any complaints from, from the Pine Point area. Uh, just on a, a side note, just uh, on Friday, when, uh, as I met with Charlie, I did get a complaint from the Pine Point area through uh, uh, DEP. Uh, they had been notified of a sewer odor issue down on Pine Point. Um, and Pillsbury Lane area, so I met with the EP and the people who brought us out onto the beach, and it ended up being a seaweed issue on the beach. Um, we actually we, we collected bacterial samples and uh, ran fecal coliform analysis on the, on the uh, ocean water right where the odor issue was and found uh, no fecal coliform. So, Joe, I know you had a... Same question. I didn't hear. Oh, oh sorry. I didn't hear what uh, the was. So uh, I'm looking, just looking at the uh, the levels, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you didn't receive any complaints other than what you just discussed with DEP. Um, I I would believe to still have an odor problem there. Is what we're doing for interventions working? The numbers seem to be quite high for what our treatment was, and I know there's been an increased um, amount of use just because of summertime mm -hmm. and the occupancies around there and businesses. Mm -hmm. I was just more or less asking if what we're doing is enough or if we need to look at more. Um, I, if you recall, you, may, you, you probably don't recall, back before we were doing any of this, we had read, readings of uh, 700 and higher in, in some of those manholes. Um, and now uh, so, you know, we're talking averages of, you know, 13, 0, and 2 in the three locations that we're calling in the last round of collections. Um, I think our sampling, our, our, what we're doing is actually doing a very good job. I go down there all the time and walk around. I don't, I don't smell the, the sewer in the, in the area at all. Matter of fact, I tried to actually take a picture. I was down at uh, Pump Station 2, which is the one on um, the Eastern Trail at Pine Point. And it was a really hot, humid day, and uh, there was a family of bikers that were seeking refuge in the shade right at the pump station, eating their granola bars and drinking their, their waters, um, not aware that it was a pump station. So, you know, I think what we are doing is, is, is actually doing a very good job. Um, and, and the new system thank has... You. The new system hasn't yet started operating, so we'll be, we'll be running that. Yeah, we'll be looking in a couple of weeks still. I've, once we get the controls, yeah. Anyway, we can hurry that along. Yeah, I've been trying. Is there any penalty clause for late delivery of the stuff? Not officially. You can okay. do you not do business with the, uh, the, the, the rep, is the, the penalty clause. Right. I hope they're aware of that. Thank you. I think that uh, explains it very well. Okay. Uh, item C was uh, Old Neck Road. You had a compliment oh. coming from Old Neck Road. We might as well not skip over the one good bit. Yeah, I did receive a call from a resident of Old Neck Road who just wanted to call and compliment the district on a reduction of voters from the pump station on Old Neck Road. I, you know, you know um, I don't know what say about it just reporting it's a pat it. on the back you did you're doing <laughs> your job and somebody noticed that's nice gold star okay new business scarborough downs phase one self on behalf of crossroads holdings llc Goral palmer has requested that the scarborough sanitary district board of trustees approval of the proposed scarborough downs phase one south located off Scarborough Downs Road near Route 1. The 
proposed development is as <coughs> follows. Four multi-family uh, condominium buildings for a total of 32 units, eight duplexes for a total of 16 units, and a 10,064 square foot memory care facility. Uh, the requested flow is for 10,652 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater. The proposed sanitary sewer system includes uh, 1,579 feet of 8-inch gravity sewer, 13 manholes, and 843 feet of 6-inch sewer service. And will be connected to the existing sewer on Ent Enterprise Drive. All the proposed gravity sewer, manholes, and sewer services within the proposal shall remain privately owned. Scarborough's Downs Road will be, will be publicly owned. The roads within the proposed development will be provided, privately owned and maintained by a homeowners association. The water main will be owned and operated by the Portland Water District. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The, the approved flow is for 48 residential dwelling units and 525 gallons per day for the memory care facility of typical sanitary wastewater and an additional 19 gallons per day of infiltration for a total of 10,652 gallons per day. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts and characteristics are subject to additional approvals. This lot is partially within the original sewer service area with an allocation of 50 dwelling units at 200 gallons per day per dwelling unit for a total allocation of 10,000 gallons per day. Thus, 652 gallons per day is subject to the capacity reserve fee. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is $16.16 per gallon per day uh, based on July 2018 and is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News uh, Records Construction Cost Index. Based on this rate, the total capacity reserve fee is $10,536.32. Any additional homes, apartments, dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Uh, provide waste characterization of the sanitary waste of, of a similar facility, including VOD, COD, TSS, ammonia, oil and grease, and pH for the uh, memory care facility. The memory care facility will have an independent water meter to measure the water consumption. Uh, it will also require a, um, uh, a submeter for <coughs> irrigation purposes. Uh, an, in, an exterior grease interceptor shall be required for the memory care facility. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the sewer permit is executed. Provide a sampling manhole for the memory care facility downstream from the convergence of the grease interceptor and the sanitary waste. Monthly composite samples of the memory care uh, facility combined wastewater is required, of which will be tested for VOD, COD, TSS, ammonia, and pH in oil and grease. Data must be provided to the district monthly. The superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained. Uh, CCTV inspection of the installed sewer is required at the completion of the project. Uh, the proposed project utilizes a private sewer system that shall remain private and the operation and maintenance of the system shall be the responsibility of the owners. Provide a copy of the proposed easements showing rights of use. Final plan shall, shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. Um, a sewer extension permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to the sewer ex extension work. Uh, sewer permit is required for each sewer service. And professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings and stamped PDF of the CAD drawings to stamp paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Uh, I have representatives from Crossword uh, Holdings uh, here. If they want to speak, I do not. No, they do. Um, Mr. What, Chairman, yeah, I'd like to move yes. to accept the project with the 14 conditions enumerated by the superintendent. Your second? Second. Moved and seconded by. Uh, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, the waste characterization for the memory care facility, mm -hmm. 
so they've provided you with the anticipated parameters, but what you're saying is you'd like to see a waste characterization done on a similar facility. And they they own somewhere. and operate a facility up in Cumberland, okay. uh, same size, same facility, essentially. They being? Uh, the people that are proposing to build this new memory care facility at this location. Not being Risberra Brothers? Not being Risberra Brothers. Okay. So they're going to provide that information. So just to, real, just to be aware that this motion then is contingent upon that data being submitted. I just want to be clear about be clear about that. Um, and secondly, um, with regard to the sampling requirements, mm -hmm. in the event I know as the superintendent you can modify those requirements. Mm -hmm. In the event that you make a change, either relaxing those requirements or not, you do do a written documentation of that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. And that, that's been uh, the common practice. Typically, what ends up happening after. Uh, several rounds of sampling, the, the uh, and consistency of the results, the sampling uh, will get reduced to once a quarter unless it's proven that it's just typical sanitary waste and then it just goes away. Yep. Okay. But you'll document and that. And I document right? that. I write, yep. I write it in, a, uh, in some form of correspondence and put yep. it in the file. Yep. Okay. Rocky, would you like to make any comments? Thank you. Good evening, Rocky Risperra. Um, I would appreciate the board, uh, the board of trustees, to approve this project tonight. But I would ask uh, if you could make a modification uh, in your approval. We are fairly confident that we can get the um, road within the condominium project uh, accepted by the town. And so I'm wondering if you would modify your approval to state that if the road is a public way, uh, obviously all of the sewer will be built to the. the district standards, would you uh, allow us to uh, ask the uh, trustees to accept uh, that, that sewer? So I think what I would prefer to do rather than change that tonight would be to let, let's wait and see if that materializes. Um, the superintendent hasn't necessarily reviewed those to see if they meet our standards for a public acceptance. Mm -hmm. So that I don't think anybody would object as long as uh, it, it would be kind of a pro forma decision for us to make to if it's a public road and the sewers meet our standards um, that we would uh, it would be unusual for us not to not to accept them as that's, public. That's what I had assumed. The Portland Water District wants to have a public main there, and the more we've looked at this project, the more it makes sense to just make it a public way. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think when that happens, um, it would be a simple thing for the superintendent to bring that back to us. But rather than make that change now, when he hasn't reviewed it under that, I think we ought to just proceed forward with the approval on this as it stands. And then if that eventuality does occur, it would be a simple matter to, for us to to modify that at a future at okay. a future date, I think it would be I think it would be cleaner for us to do do it that way, and we'd be, we'd be sure that the superintendent has identified any issues that might exist, <coughs> and and it might be good for you to spend a little bit of time with the superintendent reviewing the design or ask him to review the design to see whether there's any changes that you might want to make to it before you build it, if there's anything that needs to be made from a for it to be accepted that. Uh, he hasn't, wouldn't insist on if it was going to be private that you ought to be aware of that and be able to build it to that standard the first time through rather than having to go back and make changes later. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, perfect sense. I was going to actually ask that because I, I didn't review it with that yeah. mindset. So. Yeah. Okay. So, any other questions from trustees? No. Okay. Anybody else want to speak? Good idea. Uh, all, those, all those in favor of the motion? None opposed. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, next item is on the new business uh, Scarborough Public Safety Building. Um. On behalf of the town of Scarborough, Sebago Technics has requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approve approval of the proposed 25,182 square foot public safety building located at 267 U.S. Route 1. 
as outlined within this email document. Excuse me. Uh, this building will not only house the administrative offices of police and fire, but will also have space for a bunkhouse for the firemen, a kitchen for use by the staff, and a garage for the fire engines. The kitchen will have an internal grease trap, and the garage will have four drains that will be connected to the sewer via an oil water separator. Three houses are currently located at this, lo um, at this location and will be torn down uh, to facilitate its construction. The sewer services to those houses have already been dug up and capped at the property line. The proposed building will be sewered via the private sewer that currently sewers the town hall. The sewer will be, have to be relayed as shown to facilitate construction. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Based on four gallons per day per 100 square feet of wastewater flow, is, uh, the wastewater flow is estimated at 1,007 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. This is consistent with uh, water consumption at the current public safety building. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts or characteristics <coughs> are subject to additional approvals. Uh, this lot uh, currently has three houses which are connected to the sewer. Each house had an allocation of 200 gallons per day. That's 407 gallons per day with a 1,007 gallons per day um, uh, subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $16.16 per gallon uh, and it is adjusted monthly based on the ENR construction cost index. Based on this rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $6,577.12. Any flows in excess of this amount are uh, subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fee. Quarterly composite <coughs> sample of the wastewater is required, of which will be tested for BOD, COD, TSS, ammonia, and oil and grease. Data must be provided to the district quarterly. The superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure these uh, Representative data is obtained. CCTV inspection of installed sewers required at the completion of projects. Final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval uh, prior to the issuance. Uh, sewer extension permit is required. The complete application associated fee so shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. Uh, sewer permit is required for uh, the, the sewer service. Uh, complete act application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. And then uh, professionally surveyed and electronic geo reference CAD drawings, stamped PDF CAD drawings, and stamped paper copies be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Questions for the superintendent? Uh, you need a so moved with the eight conditions as enumerated by the superintendent. Moved by Bennett. Second. 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 Thank you. I uh, did uh, one thing I would do forgot to mention and I wanted to follow up on. I did check with the town and this area is identified as a growth um, area and they will be providing me documentation to support that to allow the sewer extension. So just as a reminder, uh, the law requires uh, sanitary districts to get confirmation from the, the municipality that any sewer extensions are consistent with the comprehensive plan. So Dave is following up, follows up when there's a sewer extension in an area to make sure that if it's outside of our service area, which we have a physical geographic boundary established for that the planning board uh, or, the, or the town council certifies to us that, um, that the proposed project is, the sewer extension is consistent with the comprehensive plan. And that's something that's been on the books for a long time now. Um, I have a question. Um, the bunkhouse and the kitchen, are those duplicative of existing facilities or are those additional to the facilities that exist at the, at the existing public safety building now? I have uh, reached out to the, um, the, the engineer and we're missing each other with regard to vacations and I need to close that loop on that. Okay. Um, so Joe, do you know? 
Um, I'm sorry, do you rephrase your question? Well, this proposal, the proposal for the new building will have space for a bunkhouse for firemen and a kitchen for staff use. And I'm asking if that's duplicate, duplicative of the existing building or is that <coughs> additional, is that new, are those new facilities that the existing space doesn't provide? Um, so a uh, short answer is no, they, they have those kind of facilities now. Okay. Um, but uh, now we'll have the floor, if you don't mind. I plan to abstain for the motion or the vote just because, not that I'm intimate with the project, but just because of my relationship with the public safety department mm -hmm. in town. Yeah, sure. That would be probably be prudent to avoid any potential uh, no conflicts for impression of a conflict of interest. With I don't think I don't think you have a I don't think you have a financial interest in this not a bit. in any way. But <laughs> <laughs> my trucks won't even be at the station. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, any other questions or comments? Ben? I just had a question on the uh, oil, gasoline. Oil water separator? What size is that going to be? How much is that going to be able to hold? They are actually provided. It, it's, uh, they had a gallon. And I may not, not provide you with the details. Um, I'm Talk sure we're on hand. C3 too. But they don't no, know. yeah, they, they had provided me with a detail of the oil water separator. Okay. And I wanted to say, I want to say it was 70 gallons uh, capacity. But I, I have actually reached out to them and want them to provide me with uh, the uh, sizing criteria that they use to get the size that we have. Okay, so I, I thought it was usually the Whatever a few the largest fuel tank or something that might actually leak. Is that, is that what, what would you normally see the size and criteria for that? Thousand gallons usually. No, that'd be um, there's two criteria that are used for uh, sizing those and uh, one would be considered a a low risk facility. Uh, uh, like like a garage where vehicles are just being stored versus a facility where you've got uh, uh, work being performed on them and, and oil changes and stuff like that. Um, so, and, and one results in a, in a much smaller capacity. Um, so, uh, and I, I don't know the details off the top of my head okay. what, the, what the numbers should be. But it, this would be considered a low risk place because it's it's just to park the oh. truck okay. um, until it goes out on a call. They don't actually do their own maintenance on them. They do maintenance down at the public works garage. Okay. So there are going to be floor drains in the garage, in the however, garage. and there's no potential for oil spills or anything to happen in the garage area that would require the oil to be separated on those lines? There will be floor drains. And there, the oil water separator is required as a result of it being a garage. Yep. Uh, and it just, uh, you can, you know, you get drips every now and then. But you will have melting snow and that will convey that. But no, they will not be doing performing work on the vehicles there. Mm -hmm. So I understand that, but with the floor drains in the garage, do we, do we, is it still not, it's not prudent to have the oil water separator, have the oil um, water separator on that line, have that line? It is on that through? line. It goes through an oil, those floor drains go through an oil water separator before it connects to the, to the sewer system. Well, <clears throat> looking at this letter of August 16th, which says the floor drains are connected to the sewer line <coughs> down gradient of the oil water separate. That's Bago Technics. Which comment. plan is that? The letter from Sebago Technics dated August 16th to the superintendent. States that the floor drains are connected to the sewer line down gradient of the oil water separator. If you look at the, oil, the drawings, no, I couldn't see that. I couldn't. 
I looked at the drawings quickly, but I, I'm just reading the I'm just reading the letter, and I'm assuming that the plans are consistent with the letter. Um, I don't have the drawings with me right now, but I will confirm that that is written incorrectly. Um, my, I, I looked at it very specifically, and the drains were um, upstream of the oil water separator, and the oil water, from the oil water separator it discharges to connect to the storm and to the uh, sewer. Okay. I can so, that. so let's go back to our let's go back to the conditions under the motion for approval. Mm -hmm. um, I I do have one other question, and actually, it's something that Joe sure, was just mentioning. So, um, are there any potential that any um, vehicle washing will occur in the garage, and that detergent laden water would also go through the oil Absolutely. water separator? Because we don't want that. Absolutely. I would think that they would be washing vehicles in that garage. I think they usually wash them at basis. public works. Don't you? Where do you normally wash them? <laughs> not outside is the answer. I know. Uh, not outside is the not answer. What a D D. Yeah. Correct. Um, and not to box myself <laughs> into any more conflict. Um, but Look, no, uh, I, you don't even need to answer the question. Uh, it's probably inappropriate for ask for us to ask you, Joe. So let me just let the superintendent make the inquiry. Thank you. And, and we'll and we'll. Um, and we'll find out what the answer is. So, so your point being, Aubrey, that if they're washing vehicles in the garage, they discharging that to the to the floor drains. That what? Detergent water should not go through oil water separators because it emulsifies it, the right. oil. That's my point. Okay, and that may be why they propose to connect downstream from the oil water separator. It really should um, be connected downstream though. Yeah. If they're connected downstream, What's the point? what good is the oil water separator? <laughs> right. Maybe there's one drain in an area where vehicles could be washed that wouldn't be connected. I don't I don't know. Some some vehicles have a whole separate area with uh, like a tight tank for vehicle washing. Maybe that's what they're planning on doing, but I don't see outlines of that on the So I guess I guess my question at this point is: Do we want? To, is this a big enough question that we should wait and uh, let the superintendent resolve this with them, or have him bring it back to us if if he needs to do that? I think I would say Dave knows the rules, and I think if he gets confirmation that the oil water separator is connected at the appropriate place and that detergent water is not going through it, then I think we could authorize him, like make an, a motion contingent on those answers. Okay, well we have the motion on the floor, mm -hmm. but we have raised a question that's really not addressed in the motion with regard to, with regard <coughs> to oil and water separators. Your, your conditions really didn't speak to the oil and water separator uh, issue. I thought it did, didn't it? Wasn't it number? Talks about oil separator. Yes. Uh, no, I just mentioned it. Yeah. Where is it mentioned? It uh, it's uh, three. Isn't it? Three. three. Sampling requirements. Oh, that's sampling. That's sampling. But I mentioned it in the uh, descriptive point, uh, uh, piece, the first paragraph, the last sentence. Uh, yeah. um, Mentions the kitchen will have an internal grease trap and the garage will have floor drains that will be connected to the sewer via an oil water separator. So if that we was, that was the reference. Okay. That so if, so if those we, are so those are our assumptions in our approval. Yes. And if the superintendent finds that, that it's different than that, then he'll bring it back to us. Yes. Is that is that fair to say? The only David Yes, that, that is fair to say and that, and that is fine. Megan. I will confirm that. The only piece that is not in the uh, write up is the detergent water for truck washing. Well, I think that, yeah, you can, you can continue to follow up on that. And yep. again, if you need to bring it back with a revision, 
you can bring it back. Yep. But if it turns out that everything is the way it's supposed to be, yep. as it's summarized in your summary, that's fine. But I would just point out that your summary is at odds with the letter from Sebago Douglas. All right. Uh, other questions or comments for the superintendent? Um, I did have one quick question yes. about the new public safety building. Once it's built, is the old one going to be repurposed, or is it's going this to be sold? What, it's going to be sold. Yep. Okay. So, so it will be repurposed, it not, by repurposed not by it'll the be, town. It will be put into private. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Okay. All those Thank in you. favor of the motion. None opposed, one abstention. Okay, item C, budget summary. Uh, seven month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend the approval. So moved. Second, is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Questions for the superintendent? Um, there's a line here that has zero dollars associated with it called superintendent search. We yep. found the superintendent a few years ago. I hope there's nothing you really <laughs> want to talk about. Is there, Dave? Yeah, no, that keeps coming back. <laughs> Can we just remove some of these zero items? That would be yeah. helpful. Thank you. Well, we can re remove that one anyway. At least that one. The other, the other zero items are items that uh, that are placeholders for us to look at during our budget deliberations. Yeah. So I think it would be prudent to keep those because it just focuses our attention on the need to address those items as we go through. Even the miscellaneous expenses, I wouldn't mind getting rid of that too because that doesn't say what it's for. You know what I mean? Well, I think you need to keep that one. Okay. I would, I would, su I would suggest Fine keeping that. it just okay. as a, as a uh, reminder during the superintendent's budget preparations that at some point sometimes there are items in there okay in that line and if we remove it it's more likely to be an uh-oh later on that works for me then thank you but i think the superintendent's search can go away and one more question yes joe uh just a curiosity under contractual services i'm sure there's been something going on but obviously uh, just in light of the difference in the budget versus the actual, uh, uh, where we are versus budget-wise, it's just a timing thing. When we do the budget, we we divide it by twelve months. Right. I just figured that. I just <clears throat> <clears throat> <Sorry>. <clears throat> I just didn't know if there was anything that was unanticipated that caused for the fifteen thousand dollars increase. Uh, well, two sewer services that we just repaired. <laughs> that might do it. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, all those in favor of the motion to accept? None opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, public comments? There are no public remaining at the meeting. Uh, trustee comments? Nick? Okay, first I want to thank, where's Vera Brothers for the repair down at Autumn Pond on the private sewer system and for completing the Eco 2 system installation and all the emergency work they have provided for us in the past. I appreciate it. I also want to congratulate Ken on passing the DMR QA38 testing and um, I want to thank the staff for another wonderful month. Good luck with the new billing software and have a safe and happy Labor Day. <coughs> Ben. I'll do Nick's comments. Okay. That's the easy way out. I think it should <laughs> it be is. speak. He just did, did a nice job. I thought Nick did a nice job. He does he a did good a job. wonderful <laughs> job. I'll do a no. Judy. <laughs> I will not do it. Um, I'd just like to say I have lived in Maine my entire life until now, and this is the best summer I can ever, ever <laughs> remember. I don't even care about the humidity. The sun was shining, it was, you didn't get rain. The humidity was about 70%, 31 days in a row. I didn't even care. It was wonderful, and I hope we all get to enjoy the rest of it because we know what's coming. <laughs> Fall. Yeah, right. 
Audrey. Um, again, congratulations to Ken for another successful lab certification. Um, I wanted to say thanks to uh, Jay and Rudy who came out to help me at Autumn Pond when my camera was insufficient to get through the deflection. Um, and I wanted to thank Dave for letting me come down and pick through some plans for that subdivision so I knew where I could find the manholes. Um, and last, I just wanted to mention that there's a draft of the town comprehensive plan on the town website for review. If any of you were interested in that sort of thing, it does look at areas that are proposed for um, some more uh, robust development in the town and where we can improve services and where we can improve uh, traffic with some some tweaks. So I think comments are due end of September. And I might yeah. take a look at it before the next meeting. Are you working on a committee? No. Uh, oh, okay. No, but I, I, I'm hoping, I do hope that one of the committees does reach out to talk to Dave. Um, so I yeah. would encourage them to do so. And they I have. feel like <coughs> they, they have to, yeah. They have before, right? But had, you know, once the comments come in to review them, yeah. it'd be good well, to have the sanitary district. Included in the well, conversation. Well, it's really it's really important that there be conversation because um, the town's plans uh, are dependent on us being able to provide sewer service for those facilities, and uh, while we have capacity now, there's nothing to say that that capacity will be adequate to meet whatever the plans are. There's tremendous growth happening. Right. Uh, well, in town. So it's, I've asked the superintendent to try to stay engaged in that process, to reach out to the planning department, mm -hmm. to be sure that conversation happens. I think, I think that's going on. Um, and I think I've also suggested to him, if he ever felt it necessary, that the trustees or a subcommittee of the trustees would be available to meet with the town manager, town council, or planning board to... Mm -hmm to discuss any issues that might need, might need to be discussed. It's a, it can be a complicated process, and uh, as we know from our last, uh, as we go, as we know from our last permitting process for our plant expansion, um, you know, we only have one location for our treatment plant uh, a second, a second plant somewhere would be a very difficult, if not impossible, thing to do. So, mm -hmm. um, at some point, you know, uh, push may come to shove, and decisions have to be made about what can and can't be done and how they can be financed. So, but do you feel there should be formal comments that come from the trustees? Like, I'm, I'm likely going to put together comments of my own, and I can keep an eye out specifically well, for. Sanitation, you know, sanitary sewer issues, and maybe go over them with Dave or discuss them with Dave. We don't have to answer this now. I just well, wanted to remind people that it's out for review. And yeah, I think I think I think your comment is a is a good comment. At the, you know, just to kind of refocus our attention on that process, it would seem to me that public utilities would be an important component of any kind of comprehensive mm -hmm. plan revision that might be made. And at some point, there should be some discussion, <coughs> some formal discussion between us mm -hmm. and them, at least. Um, I don't know what the right mechanism for that to happen would be, but I just would ask the superintendent to reach out, and maybe I'll stop into the town manager's office and have a conversation with him about it, just to be sure that something isn't slipping through the cracks. Thanks, Evan. Mm -hmm. Joe. I agree with Aubrey that, you know, the Skyward Downs project alone would be prudent for us to stay on top of what our future infrastructure needs may be. So whatever support the superintendent needs for us in the comprehensive plan. Uh, otherwise than that, uh, just again, uh, congratulations to Ken and thank you to the staff for the continued good efforts. Yep. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, I want to thank uh, the superintendent and Wendy for continuing to do a great job with our agendas, meetings, minutes, and every, all the administrative details um, being taken care of at the district and also with our staff. Um, I, think, I think I moved Ken into the lab many years ago. Um, it was a big step forward for him. 
and I'm just happy to see him continue to do a great job down there um, and routinely accomplish his recertifications. It's really kind of kind of great, and I'm, I'm proud of Ken for the work that he's done over the years, and uh, um, he's kept things interesting. Also, I'd like to wish everybody a safe and happy Labor Day. Seems like this summer has gone by faster than most, but uh, as I get older, every summer seems to go by faster than the one before. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Mo moved and seconded. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to keep hitting my papers into my microphone. <laughs> 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 <laughs>